infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and this is Outbreak News Interviews. Now, monkeypox is a rare viral disease that occurs mainly in the rainforest countries of Central and West Africa. The disease was first discovered in laboratory monkeys in 1958. In 1970, monkeypox was reported in humans for the first time. And in June 2003, monkeypox was reported in prairie dogs and humans in the U.S. Well, joining me today for a primer on monkeypox is Professor Emeritus of Pediatrics and Epidemiology at the Yale Schools of Medicine and Public Health and the author of the very good book, Animal Viruses and Humans, A Narrow Divide, Warren Andaman, M.D. Dr. Andaman, welcome to the show, sir. Oh, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. You bet. Well, let's go ahead and just start with the basics. What causes monkeypox? Well, uh, monkeypox is caused by the monkeypox virus. It makes sense, right? Right. Uh, the monkeypox virus uh, is one of uh, 12 distinct species of pox viruses, which are grouped uh, into four uh, genera or, or families. Mm -hmm. The pox viruses are the largest, and the most complex of all animal viruses. Some of them can cause uh, disease in humans, and others uh, cannot, at least, at least so far. Um, smallpox, which is fairly closely related to monkeypox, uh, is the only uh, one of the pox viruses that causes disease exclusively in humans, mm -hmm. but most of the other pox viruses, or a lot of them, can spread between different animals and, and humans. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, um, it's found in the rainforest countries of Central and West Africa. Um, can you elaborate on that? Are there particular countries that get hit the hardest with this? Uh, well, yes. Uh, as you say, the, the viruses it has mainly been reported in uh, Central Africa and, and West Africa. Um, the uh, two of the countries that have been uh, hard hit uh, in Central Africa uh, are the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, mm -hmm. uh, and the Sudan. Uh, but they're recently uh, has been uh, an increasing uh, increasing reports of monkeypox uh, much more in the past decade than uh, during any of the previous 40 years. And some of those newer countries uh, are, for example, the Central African Republic, and then in West Africa, Liberia, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone. And there are some chimpanzees that have been infected with uh, monkeypox in, in uh, Cameroon. Uh, but as of 2018, Nigeria has been experiencing the largest outbreak uh, in West Africa. And the DRC continues to be the most uh, the most common uh, co carrier of monkeypox in Central Africa. Yeah, as if the DRC didn't have enough problems, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They, I don't. It's really, a, it's just the center of so many different viruses. Ebola, obviously, yeah. Ebola is is spreading through the DRC also. Right. Now, are there different strains of the virus? There are two 
recognized strains or, or what we call clades mm -hmm. of the virus. There is the, the West African strain and what's called the Congo Basin strain. And they differ both in their epidemiologic characteristics and some of their clinical features. The West African strain seems to cause a much milder disease uh, and therefore results in a much lower frequency of, of death than the Central African strain. But, but, you know, the genetics of the peoples who live in West Africa is, are different from the uh, genetic characteristics in Central Africa. And obviously there, there have to be differences in the microenvironments in those two places that might account for the difference in the lethality in those two places. Mm -hmm. So what are the general symptoms that you see with a monkeypox infection? Okay. In Africa, and I'll speak, speak a little bit about uh, what, what's been seen most often in Africa versus what happened in the United States mm -hmm. when the disease spread there. In Africa, the disease is characterized by a widespread pustular rash that is it's particularly prominent on the uh, face, the hands, and the feet. And it very closely resembles uh, what's previously been uh, seen in smallpox. If you, if you see pictures of smallpox uh, disease people versus monkeypox disease, they're, they're almost indistinguishable from one another. When the, uh, when the lesions, when these pustular lesions uh, eventually cross over, they then slough off and the uh, people who are infected develop these really badly scarred uh, regions of their skin, which become permanently deforming. In the United States during the outbreak in the Midwest, uh, the lesions really were limited to areas that were either bitten or uh, scratched. And in those cases, it was really merely a, uh, a pustule or a group of pustules at the site of the bite uh, and then some swelling and uh, pain and redness mm -hmm. in the same area. There was no widespread rash in other parts of the body, none at all. Okay, well, you, you mentioned that the relationship between smallpox and monkeypox. However, uh, monkeypox is not nearly the mortality rate of smallpox. That's correct, absolutely correct, yeah. Um, how do people contract the virus? I mean, since you feature this in your book, clearly it's a yeah. zoonotic infection. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in Africa, the presumed driver of monkeypox outbreaks has been traced to contact with animal reservoirs, as you mentioned, not all of which have been uh, identified. Uh, people uh, who contract the disease uh, most often have contact with both live and dead animals. And bushmeat uh, tends to be the source of the infection. And the animals that have been most uh, closely uh, connected with Monkeypox are monkeys, squirrels, and other rodents. Um, the, um, there is no specific uh, individual species 
that's been uh, universally connected with monkeypox. It's believed to be uh, an infection of multiple, primarily rodent species uh, in Africa. In the United States, uh, the only animal that has been connected with uh, monkeypox has has been uh, prairie dogs. Has been prairie dogs, right. uh, and that that's it. Okay. Well, Dr. Endeman, can you go ahead and discuss the treatment? And is there a vaccine for this? Uh, there is no, there is no vaccine, no specific monkeypox vaccine. However, the smallpox vaccine, in which the active ingredient is vaccinia, uh, a virus of confusing origin, the smallpox vaccine is known to protect against uh, monkeypox infection. In, in, uh, just to give an example, there was a survey done in the late 1970s where epidemiologists learned that people who had been vaccinated against smallpox up to 20 years previously had only a very, very small chance of contracting monkeypox, whereas uh, people who had never been vaccinated with smallpox were much more likely to get really serious monkeypox infection. Uh, so smallpox is, is, is really the only vaccine that's been shown to at least protect somewhat against uh, monkeypox or serious monkeypox infection. The treatment uh, it is really very uh, straightforward. There is no antiviral uh, that uh, has been used or that's even been uh, invented. Treatment is limited to supportive care, mm -hmm. only supportive care. Things like temperature control, respiratory support, uh, and antibiotics only to prevent uh, bacterial superinfection of some of the really nasty lesions that appear on the skin. And that's it. And that's the way the uh, American uh, monkeypox victim, victims were treated. They, they went to hospitals and just got supportive treatment, and they all recovered. Sure. Well, um, my last question, and a, quite an interesting one, is, uh, Dr. Andaman, can you give the audience uh, a summary of the story of what happened in the U.S. in 2003? Okay. That's the greatest story <laughs> that I came across when I was writing my book. It, was, it really is almost impossible to believe there's anything other than fiction. Uh, the monkeypox outbreak in the United States occurred uh, in the American Midwest uh, in 2003. And the investigations that took place to analyze uh, that particular outbreak is, in my mind, the most perfect example of classical sleuthing detective work. Mm -hmm. The epidemiologists did what they were supposed to do, and they pretty quickly figured out what was going on. The index case was, or patient zero, was a three-year-old little girl in central Wisconsin. She was hospitalized with fever and a really nasty soft tissue infection of her hand at the sight of a bite from her pet prairie dog. Mm -hmm. When the epidemiologist took a careful history, it revealed that the guinea pig had developed uh, conjunctivitis, a really drippy eyes, swollen glands, 
and uh, bumps all over its skin on the exact same day that it bit the little girl. The animal, the prairie dog, died three days later, but the little girl survived after getting routine uh, care in the hospital. But two weeks later, a meat inspector who also worked part-time as a distributor of exotic animals also got sick with fever and chills and terrible lymph node swelling. He had been bitten and scratched by a prairie dog, uh, and uh, the lumps that developed uh, in his skin were, were drained and were examined under the electron microscope and revealed classical pox virus mm -hmm. uh, particles. It was the trace back uh, that the epidemiologists uh, used to learn that the man, this, this uh, purveyor of, of exotic animals, had had or had received rodents from Ghana. Uh, and at least one of those was a giant Gambian pouched rat, mm -hmm. which he kept in an open cage near a much larger collection of prairie dogs, which he later sold as pets. And it was later uh, determined that these prairie dogs and the Gambian rat from Ghana, and the little girl, and all the other people who who got infected with monkeypox, all carried exactly the same strain of uh, monkeypox that really was traced to this uh, West African Gambian rat. It's a fast, it's incredible. fascinating it's story. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. And the, the like you said, some really good shoe leather epidemiology on that one. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's what these epidemiologists from the CDC do routinely. They just know exactly what they're doing, and they do it. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, well, if you want to read more about monkeypox and um, other zoonotic infections, uh, I encourage you to check out Dr. Andaman's book. It's titled Animal, Viruses, and Humans, A Narrow Divide, and I'll put a link to it on the website so you, want, you can go check it out. And I want to thank you, Dr. Warren Andaman, for your time to discuss this very interesting zoonosis. Oh, it was a pleasure. 